World Bank, MF, also called the Bretton Woods institutions, that dealing with just financial and economic aspects. United Nations are totally different. As you know, IMF and World Bank do not belong to the United Nations. And uh, this was a uh, U.S. unfortunately. <laughs> Don't consider me anti-U.S. Eh? But it's your country that does things that are no good. It's not me <laughs> that I'm bad. The United Nations didn't want. They wanted a separate institution. Bretton Woods and the United Nations. And they wanted to be the Bretton Woods institution where just the rule established by the winners. The United Nations uh, were a, a spontaneous, deliberate choice of each state to be part of the United Nations. And the United Nations uh, have uh, a strong uh, basis based on the principle of nation sovereignty. Why IMF and the World Bank? No. The, formerly, the members of the IMF and the World Bank are uh, sovereign, independent, de facto. The mechanism is that uh, only some countries have the power of decision. And one country has the power of blocking everything, which means that in the IMF as well as the World Bank, the total alliance of all members uh, cannot impeach the United States to decide. But the United States alone can impeach the mechanism to decide. This is not based on the principle of national sovereignty. This is of the hierarchy. And this is normal because these were institutions uh, created by the winner. IMF, World Bank, and their statues have been slightly modified since uh, the 44, 45, when they have been created. Whereas the United Nations have been built in uh, later. Huh? And uh, so, having said this, now I can uh, make a different comments. IMF and the World Bank are the instruments of the powerful, of the powerful. So, ironically enough, the subtitle of the World Bank is we fight against poverty. <laughs> but I, I laugh because <laughs> how you can mystify the reality <laughs> in such a formal way <laughs> is an excellent intelligence power of those who have built the World Bank. Huh? Uh, the World Bank is an instrument of a favoring the most rich, the most powerful, to control the development in the world. Because all world program, all uh, economic aid or program or, or loans that the World Bank uh, does is according to the principle of uh, the richest, of uh, the, the winner. And for instance, since 78, the so-called, you remember, uh, a strategy of uh, conditionality of uh, adjustment structure, structure adjustment policy, no? Uh, 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 was the what was that you, a state, if you want a loan, you must adapt and follow the principles of the World Bank, which are liberalization, deregulation, privatization, competitiveness, the new tables of law which I mentioned in my first comment. And this was the conditionality. And one of the most important conditionalities since 92, which was imposed on the occasion of the first Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro for the world Earth, Earth uh, development, sustainable development, uh, the first conditionality was regarding uh, common goods. You want loans in order to uh, modernize your 
water pump to water pipeline system. Okay, I give you the money, but you liberalize, you deregulate, you privatize. This is the peaceful conditionality. And or today, a bank want a country ask money for building up hospitals. So say, okay, I give you the money, but you liberalize, privatize, deregulate, put on competition on the market, the health services. And I wouldn't say that this is very good for people. This is very good for the World Bank. And I would not say that they do in order to fight against the poverty. They give money and they increase the impoverishment process over those who need the oil. IMF. MIMF is a stability institution, it's a short term. You have a problem of liquidity, a problem of money availability, you don't have in order to equalize your budget or in order to stabilize. Well, they give you a loan, but again, once you get the loan from a short term, uh, from IMF, then you must apply. Normally, people are considered, but this is normal, no? That uh, if I give you a loan, you must obey to my rules. No? Well, one thing is that uh, uh, you establish rules that uh, respect. Okay, I can pay you, reimburse you for that, it's okay. No? But with this does not mean that uh, give you, because you give me a loan, the indefinite for in time uh, alone, indefinite time for 20, 30 years that you become owners of my economy. Huh? So this is very bad. So I, my judgment is that uh, the sooner we change IMF and the World Bank, the better will be for humanity. Regarding the United Nations, we have to do a moderate, a balanced assessment. Uh, though, of course, uh, bureaucracy, UN uh, bureaucracy is, is a subject uh, submitted to, to the rules of the most powerful uh, states, still you have uh, in the bureaucracy and the whole movement associated to the civil society with UN uh, supported activities. And we have uh, organizational life, for instance, UNDP, United Nations Development Program, which is the strongest uh, org agency in the UN system. Uh, uh, you have a good people, and they try to, go, to do things. But in the last uh, 15 years, uh, following the so-called Global Compact, you have heard about the Global Compact, which is a contract between the Secretary General of the United Nations and multinational company that pay. Since uh, the Secretary General of the United has uh, money shortage for their own budget, for their own functioning, are the contribution of the multinationals that enable the General Secretary of the United Nations to go because the United States, the people, member states, the state don't want to pay. And the United States, again, <laughs> is always late in the, of two years, three years, in the paying uh, the, the share that uh, the, uh, each state must pay. So they have a problem of liquidity. Of, uh, uh, and uh, this global compact has allowed the General Secretary to have uh, new, fresh money. And it uh, means that multinationals are now in the process of uh, UN deliberations. Not directly on the, vote, on the votes at the end, but they are part of the process. They are now in the process. And since then, FAO accepts without protesting a lot of things done by agro-food multinationals. Other agencies included the NDP, now they must accept a lot of things. So I have the impression that there has been a, a regression 
of the capacity of the UN to be an independent uh, organ or institutions vis-à-vis -vis the private interest. They have never been independent by statutes from uh, political interest of the states. This is accepted, this is normal, it's in the treaty. But before they were independent from a non-state, and today they are not only dependent from state interest, from the strongest state, but are dependent also on uh, the private multinational interest. This is a theory. I can uh, uh, give enormous evidence I have no time to do, but I can send you a uh, reference of uh, this uh, increase in dependence of the United Nations in the water area. In the water area, they are more and more uh, following the strategy of the World Bank, which is again the strategy of more many multinationals. And since uh, '93, when the World Bank elaborated the so-called Integrated Water Resource Management, which is the Bible uh, of the dominant countries in the world, uh, United Nations accepted also the bubble of the World Bank and then the multinationals. And now the water policy in the world is inspired, is dictated in the framework of the principles of uh, integrated water resource management. The two are the principles of integrated water resource management. First, that water is an economic good, is not the common good. And hence submitted to the market economy world principle. It's an economic good. It's the first time in the history of community, world community, that water has been recognized mainly as an economic growth and no longer as a social asset, as an economic growth. This is the first. And therefore liberalize uh, the regulator. And the second principle is that since the delivery of water, drinkable water and sanitation has costs, monetary costs, access to water must uh, be paid. So each since an individual must pay to have access to water. Must pay be. It means that uh, they turn around a kind of uh, uh, round up <laughs> uh, principle that the human rights to have access to human rights you must pay. So the economics of the human rights in the 60s were that this public finance, which covered the costs of the human rights. Now, human rights are there, but the economy of human rights is the market economy. What can you do with this? And there are four signs published a study in uh, February this year, uh, where independent of this aspect, economic or social aspects, they proved that today there are four billion people on the earth who are living on severe water scarcity. Four billion. How could we accept this world and say that it's governed by rational economic principles that inspired by good social principles that is shaped by highly ethical values? It's impossible to say this. So these were my comments on the two sets of institutions.